Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example of how to apply what we call double slit interference concepts to antenna patterns. So here we have two antennas, they're five centimeters apart, and they're emitting a signal at nine gigahertz. And we want to know what the central maximum bandwidth is. What is the angular size of the central maximum? So we need to find out the angular distance to the minimum on one side, and of course we take that distance, we double it, and it gives us the total size of the angular of the central maximum. And of course that would be equal to two times theta. First of all we want to do, since we're not given the wavelength, is we want to try to find the wavelength of this uh, antenna pattern. So we know that C, the speed of light, is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. So the wavelength is equal to C divided by the frequency. So it's equal to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second divided by 9 times 10 to the 9th hertz. And that looks like it is equal to 3.33 centimeters. All right, so that's the wavelength. Okay, next we need to find theta. Notice that theta can be found by setting the extra distance equal to d sine theta. So we know that, that uh, the extra distance traveled is equal to d sine theta. We know d. We don't know the extra distance traveled because we need to figure that out. And notice if we send two waves from the antenna to this location right there, they're going to differ the extra distance travel. And let me do that in a different color because I think that looks a little bit better. So let's say we have a wave going to this point right there and a wave going to this point right there. Notice this is going to be the extra distance traveled. And that extra distance traveled to have a minimum over there has to be equal to half a wavelength. All right, so what we can say here is that the extra distance traveled must be equal to lambda over 2. And since we know that the extra distance traveled is equal to d sine theta, d being the distance between the two, and theta, of course, being this angle right here, theta, which is the same as that angle right there, we can then say that d sine theta is equal to lambda divided by 2, or sine theta is equal to lambda divided by 2d, or theta is equal to the arc sine of lambda divided by 2d, which is equal to the arc sine of lambda is 3.33 centimeters, 3.33 centimeters, divided by 2 times d, which is 5 centimeters. So basically it's 0.333. So 0.333, take the arc sine of that, and that gives us 19.45 degrees. Okay, so now that we know the angle to the first minimum on one side, and it's a 19.5 degree angle between there and there, of course then to find the total width we have to double that. So we can say that this is therefore equal to 2 times the angle that we found, 19.45 degrees, which means that's equal to 38.9 degrees, and that would be equal to the width of the central maximum of this particular antenna pattern. Hmm. What if we want to have the same antenna pattern, I mean the same antennas, but we want to have a narrower beam? What can we do to make that into a narrower beam? Well, we want the angle to be bigger. If we want the angle to be bigger, that, that can be accomplished by making the denominator bigger. I'm sorry, but we want to make the angle smaller, not bigger. We want to have a narrower beam. So we want this to be smaller. That means we want this denominator here to be bigger. That means we can get a wider beam by moving these two elements further out. That'll give us a, a narrower beam. Kind of interesting how we can actually shape the beam by, by changing the distance between the two antennas right here. So what would happen if we were to double that distance? Well, let's try it. So we're going to try... Uh, we're going to take D now, is going to become 10 centimeters instead of 5 centimeters. So therefore, theta is going to be the arc sine of lambda divided by 2D, which is equal to the arc sine of 3.33 uh, centimeters for lambda divided by 2 times 10 centimeters. So now we get 3.33 divided by 20 and take the inverse sine of that, that gives us 9.58 degrees. And double that, that's just slightly less than 20 degrees. That means by doubling the distance between the two antennas, we just half the central max, we make it into a, a narrower beam. Oh, so kind of interesting, but there's a good application of how we use double slit interference pattern equations 
to something like antennas. And that's how we do that.